You know, as a broadcast journalist, I get to have a passport into people's lives, entering their lives often at the worst time or the best time of their lives. And sometimes in a single story, it's both, like this one. Question for you, Scott. Tell me about the lowest point in your life. Scott tells me it was the three days he spent living under the Magnolia Bridge, the fall of 2009. A cardboard box was his bed. And he said all he wanted to do was climb up to the Magnolia Bridge, take the stairs up there, and jump. He was at the end of his rope. So why didn't you? He tells me that he didn't have the strength to do it. He was too weak, that's why. Question for you, Rolls. Tell me about your two daughters. Rolls tells me that he hasn't been in his daughter's lives for nine years. He says he wants to prove to them and to himself that he's a changed man. And getting his family back, he tells me, is a mountain in itself. Question for these nine men. Well, you've met Scott and Rolls, Ellis, Daniel, Frank, Lee, Marcus, Lamar, Jason. I met them at Seattle's Union Gospel Mission when they were in the recovery program. Question for you men. Why do you want to climb Mount Rainier? Why this mountain? Because if I can climb Mount Rainier, if I can get to the top of that mountain, then I can do anything. And for them, anything meant one thing. There's the thing really took me deep. Climbing out of their addictions. Crack cocaine and alcohol. Methamphetamines. Anything from acid to, to heroin to pot. Once and for all. It is harder to put your life back together after this much brokenness than it is to climb that mountain. I was using a lot of meth. The drug is evil. Yeah. Alcohol was my biggest drug of choice. Cocaine. From dealing to using. About a gram a day. Uh, that's, that's a lot. Popped a pill or two here and there, you know. I used intravenous. Oil. Intravenous cocaine and heroin. Run across freeways out of my mind. <laughs> Let's say that. It's really hard. I want a beer right now, but I can't have one. So those are the men that I spent nearly a year with as they were training to climb Mount Rainier. I trained too with King 5 photojournalist Doug Burgess. We were with them in the months leading up to the climb and afterwards, uh, chronicling their lives, their ups and downs. Um, in, and we created news stories. And then after that, a documentary called Climb of a Lifetime. For me, it was a story of a lifetime. And people would come up to me and say, those guys want to climb Mount Rainier? Those guys? And I thought, yes, those guys, of course those guys. This mountain was made for them. After all, they had experienced the lowest of lows. Frank Garcia put it this way, you can't go any lower than this besides death. And for these men, overcoming their addictions and climbing out of homelessness, it really was a matter of life and death. Everything at stake. Ellis, Ellis left the recovery program just a few weeks after he started it. So he didn't get to climb, and I didn't really get to know him, but I did interview him, and he used the word conquer. He said, I'm going to conquer that mountain. And by the way, he said it just like that, with confidence. And I believed him. I wanted to believe him. It's not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Words of wisdom from mountaineer Edmund Hillary, who spoke about mountains metaphorically. So what do we need to do to get there? What do we need to do? to reach our personal summits. Well, hard work every day. Months of sustained hard work. You don't just wake up and say, I'm gonna climb Mount Rainier. You need a team, a team that will take you there. Somebody who will dig in their heels for you, plant their ice ax, who will catch you when you're falling. And you would do the same for them, a team. And this idea was Mike Johnson's idea. He's to my right. You see Rolls Martin to my left. I referred to Mike as the guide for the climb before the climb, the person who would get the men ready physically, mentally, spiritually. And he also spoke about mountains metaphorically. Everything worth climbing is a mountain. And he said, you know, we're given this one life, and the greatest loss is to have this one life and not climb a mountain. 
And I guarantee you, he was not talking about Mount Rainier, our personal mountains. And this became the theme of our documentary. It's harder to climb out of homelessness and addictions than it is to climb Mount Rainier. And Mount Rainier is hard. It's the highest peak in Washington State, as most of you, probably all of you know. 14,411 feet. 10,000 people attempt to reach the summit every year. 5,000 don't get there. And you can include me in those numbers. I didn't make it. It's hard. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so many people don't even try because they look, they look at that mountain and they go, no, 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 not me, no, no, no way. Our personal mountains too, they're hard. I know I was reminded every day when I was with these guys about the work I hadn't put in, that I needed to put in to be a better father, a better son, a better husband, a better man. And I'm still climbing. And the most important decision you can make is the decision itself to do it and to eliminate options, those options that get in the way of reaching that goal. It's not easy for any of us. I heard he was leaving last night and it just tore me apart. The path that he's on right now is, is a path of self-harm. And I knew it was the wrong decision for him. The last choice that we have of, of intercepting him before he leaves town is going to be the Greyhound bus station. So in my opinion, this is not the end. I'm not ready to give up yet. Word is, Rolls gets on the bus tonight. That was supposed to be yours. Okay. You're killing me, man. No, you're killing me right now. Listen, I'm, listen, Mike. That's not what I want for him. These next few minutes may be the most important in Rolls Martin's life. You're going off rope because you think that you know what you need to do. I got the bus ticket, everything. This is why you have friends. Right. All right, so, so you, when I, when I put you out, check this out. You're doing I, this without talking to anybody. Out. I already have a bus ticket. You've already I have three hours to get there. At least let me see what it, what's going on. He told folks that he was getting on a Greyhound bus and going to Yakima to pick cherries. For a short time. He was just going to fall again and have to start all over. Do you trust me? When you walked in that door, I was like, oh, right on. Of course I trust you. I speak from the point of view of someone who's been around this block a lot. I made a decision. Okay. okay, what's your decision? There's no way with all the love that's around me, I can tell you guys I'm going to go. Oh, my, I'm, I'm overjoyed. I mean, my sister is here. I'm not going to go. Okay? Thank you. Go home and finish decorating his cupcakes and, and bring them down for his birthday because today was his birthday. <laughs> so yeah, I'm emotional. Uh, I just about lost a friend of mine. And, uh, and now I got my friend back. I'm done hugging, right? <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact, because I was there and I can tell you, we weren't done hugging. There were many more hugs as we continued this journey Tears, laughter, prayers, lots of prayers. And Rolls Martin's prayers were answered on the morning of August 13th, 2011. Bring that changed my life. Rolls Martin was on top of the world on the morning of August 13th. Woo! Well now, you know, Rainier's a friend of mine. Who doesn't like meeting new friends? Mount Rainier. Be a little patient with us tonight and we'll go ahead and take care of you and get you all bedded down. It's old enemies you try to avoid. Rolls met up with one just 35 days after the climb. I got depressed. Um, Seattle's a real easy place to find meth, and all I did was start walking down the street. Kicked out of the recovery program after testing positive for meth, Rolls Martin is back on the bottom. It takes humility, that's for sure. He says he'll try to get into the recovery program again if the mission will give him another chance. Otherwise... You guys wouldn't know me in a year. Even if you saw me on the street, you wouldn't know me. Getting up when you've fallen down. Ultimately, that's what will separate the men who make it from the men who don't. Like Mike Johnson said, it's harder to climb out of homelessness and addictions than it is to climb Mount Rainier. Nine men set their sights on reaching the summit of Mount Rainier. Three dropped out of the recovery program so they never got to climb. 
a fourth quit the team, but he continued his commitment to recover and get better. So that left five. How many made it? Lee, Marcus, Lamar, and Rolls Martin. The mountain is more intimidating than anyone imagined. I mean, the mountain is so enormous. The reductions took them down. Now they're climbing back up to a place they've never been. Yeah. Guess where we're at? Woo! When I got to the mountaintop, it was like I just started bawling, just overwhelmed. This mountain helped me to symbolize my addiction and climbing out of recovery. I want to say I love you girls. I said I'd bring you guys up here, and you're here with me. We are in the crater of Mount Rainier, baby. Those men are going to climb Mount Rainier. Those men? Yeah, those men. Of course, those men. And I'm so grateful to them for sharing their stories. And I'm so grateful that two of the climbers are in the audience right now. And I would love it for them to stand up and feel your love. Scott Soul and Rose Martin. Scott Soul and Rose Martin. Remain standing. Remain standing. I was going to ask you to remain standing, but it might take a while. That's okay. I do want to say this. I want to give you an update. Scott Soule is the executive director of a nonprofit called Redeeming Souls. They collect shoes for the homeless, and they've collected 37,000 shoes and counting. Scott didn't summit Mount Rainier, but he tried again a year later this past summer, and I'm happy to tell you that he made it to the top. Congratulations, Scott. <laughs> Rolls Martin, you saw what happened to Rolls. I'm happy to tell you that he's climbing back up. Rolls is now enrolled at Everett Community College taking online courses. He's also working hard to get an aviation maintenance degree. But the best news of all is He's in contact with his daughters again. He's back in their daughters' lives. Congratulations, Rolls. As a matter of fact, I've never seen them. I've only seen pictures of them. Michaela and Sierra are here with their, with their dad, here to support them. It's so wonderful. It's, it's just so wonderful for me to, to see the three of you together. It really is. <clears throat> I'm almost there. Um, you know, I began this talk telling the, 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 the story about Scott's soul in those, those awful times, desperate times under the Magnolia Bridge. But after the three days, Scott decided living was better than dying. And he found his way. And more importantly, he found a team that lifted him up. So I have to ask you, who's on your team? What's your Mount Rainier? And what's the hard work you need to do to get there? Thank you. <laughs>